Welcome back to another review. I've got a new torch in for testing, the P20R from Feetorch, and this was sent in via Gearbest for review. I wanted to take a look at this because it's a new brand, haven't looked at any of their stuff before, thought it might be of interest to viewers. So just scan through the uh, package contents quickly on the box here. You can see that we do have a power bank function with this. I'm looking at the output, just under 1200 lumens, about 250 meters in terms of range. So we have a mixed beam pattern on this torch and on the back will give us a bit more specs in detail. Now you see we have three power levels and I'll come on to that later on. That might be uh, an issue for some people. Uh, we'll talk about the spacing a bit later on as well, but in terms of what's in the box, we'll go through some of the items. This is the wrist strap that's included. It's not a low profile one, but it is quite good quality. And the micro USB cable, just be aware that the tip is a bit longer on this. So not all micro USBs might fit into the torch which is slightly recessed. You do get a spare switch cover, a silicone and a spare o-ring and you get an on-the-go adapter which is for charging. This is what you use to charge with the power bank. Holster is actually quite a nice quality one. You have a spare section on the side where you can slip a battery in, possibly a cable. Um, don't see that on many holsters. It feels quite well padded. You have the popper on the back section as well as a sewn-in belt loop too. Now just a couple of points to note on this, they're using this new type of um, Velcro which is a low profile and the hooks are not as large as the normal Velcro that you see which means that you have to push it in a bit more to get it to stick. So not a big problem but just be aware of that. They're doing that I assume to reduce the risk of damage etc. It doesn't really matter to me but you're going to have to push that down a bit more to get a secure fit on it. Decent enough holster in other ways though and obviously as you'd expect a good fit for the torch. Now looking at the torch, put the dimensions on the screen. It's pretty much a standard size for a tactical looking torch. We have the two switches, the side switch and there's a base switch as well. The clip, good quality but you've only got the single position. So everything about the build on this feels good. Doesn't feel like a budget torch or a cheap torch in any way. The finish and fit is excellent. This is the micro USB port cover. It's quite small but there is a flap there to help lift it open. Now this is with the adapter put in, so you can plug in your normal USB cable into this and use it as a power bank, charge up a phone or a speaker, something like that. And we do have a crenulated bezel on the top of the torch. This is using an XPL Cree LED. We have a smooth reflector, hence we've got a mixed beam pattern, a bit of range and a bit of spread with this particular torch. Now the base or tail cap switch is a good action on this. I'm pretty happy with it. Not too light and not too much pressure required, but it is sticking out slightly so you can't um, tail stand the torch stably. So that's a small point that I would have changed on the design. You can unscrew the head. These are lubed up as well with the threads and you've got raised contact point there. So you can use um, different types of cell with this the flat top. And we'll unscrew the base cap. There's the switch and spring. Again, no problems at all with the build on this. It's about medium thickness on the aluminium. It's uh, hardened anodized aluminium, as you'd normally get with torches of this type. So I'm pretty happy with that. And as I'll just show you here, you can use any of these cells, protected or unprotected, fit into the torch, no problem at all. Going through the UI, on off with the tail switch, and it's also your momentary on, and it remembers the last setting as well. So if you've got the uh, torch set to a low power, the momentary will go to low. And the side switch is just a single press to cycle through the three power levels. Now to get to the strobe, you can only do that when it's on. So you just, when it's on, push and hold the side switch and it takes you into the first strobe mode. And then if you push and hold it again, it takes you into the SOS. So pretty simple UI. Um, works okay, don't have any problems with that myself. Now you'll notice that the green LED comes on. It's a battery level indicator and that goes to red when it gets very low, but that's always on. So I'm not exactly sure why they've done that. Most torches, they go out after about five or 10 seconds. And if you quickly press the side switch and then the um, tail switch, it will flash out the voltage, but for some strange reasons it's flashing too many times. This is 3.9 volts, this battery, so it seems to get the red, which is the 0.1 of a volt correct, but it flashes too many times for the green, which is supposed to be a single volt. So I don't know whether that's just my one or someone had a bad day at the office, but not particularly useful. Would have just gone with the 
uh, nightcore method whereas you insert a cell or you break the contact on the base switch then it would just flash out the voltage so I don't know strange anyway looking at the Olight M2 or Warrior Next to it you can see that the feed torch is a little bit longer it's about normal size for a tactical style torch of this the Warrior is a little bit shorter than many torches now just to show you the lower battery warning here you can see the green starts flashing when it's under 3.4 volts and then red starts flashing when it's under three probably would have gone for a slightly higher point when you get notified of the low battery warning but that's a small point now onto the user manual i've put that on the screen for you so you can have a look through and that just covers the ui and the uh, information that i've already provided you on using the torch so you can always pause that and have a look reasonable enough manual onto the charging and um, got a good result with this it was charging around about one amp or just over you can also use a torch when it's charging or being used as a power bank and i was getting about 1.12 amps using it as a power bank to charge a phone which is shown here in the video so good performance in that regard uh, no problems with water resistance left this submerged for about half an hour now let's look at the power output on the fee torch you won't see the lowest output which i believe is lower than the quoted 30 lumens but you'll see that it jumps up in steps rather than a smooth transition which is unusual for a torch and i'll just do the momentary function to show you that again it sort of jumps in steps rather than going straight to the power or a, or a quick smooth ramp which some of the torches do in particular the olight ones and this is a comparison with the m2r warrior you see you have a lot more power spacing on this particular torch compared to the v torch although it is quite a bit more expensive I run through a few beam shots now and we'll come back at the end and talk about a few areas on the torch. You'll be able to see from the beam shots there is a pretty big jump from the lowest output up to what they call medium it's more like having a low a high and a turbo so for me that's probably the main sticking point there are definitely some niggles with this torch 
Um, but there are also some things to like as well. That would be the main one, the uneven power spacing. I honestly think you really need to go with about four power levels for a torch that's putting out a thousand plus lumens. Um, a couple of other things, the voltage on the batteries, tried quite a few batteries, that was uh, strange, wasn't really working properly. Uh, you can't base stand it, the side LEDs always are, not a big deal, but it's just something which is unusual. And you also get that ramping effect when you go up the power levels, and there's a slight delay sometimes when it goes up to the top setting. But there are some areas that I do like, the build quality is very good, beam pattern and power output, nothing at all wrong with this at all, it's definitely competitive, good bundle and the power bank function and charging speeds are very good too. And you also have a decent price, you don't get a battery included with this, but um, for the overall bundle that you get it is very good value. So mixed bag on this one, definitely a few areas that they could improve but potentially worth looking at if you can live with those small points. I can see the power spacing being the biggest issue for most users. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you think on this one and how would you improve this model. I'll try to list out areas as I usually do with the reviews to give an honest feedback on the product. And I'll catch up with you in my next video, which is coming very soon.